welcome welcome everybody i bring you greetings from ibadan where we had the most explosive healing and deliverance crusade we'll show you the clip of it shortly but this morning we're going to go straight into the subject that we talked about before we came here faith for supernatural supplies or supernatural finance faith for supernatural finance supernatural supplies you can put supplies in the bracket or finance whichever one you put in the bracket faith for supernatural finance in bracket supplies psalm 27 and in verse 13 he said i had fainted unless i had believed to see the goodness of the lord in the land of the living our objective this morning is to understand the pathway to supernatural finance or supernatural supplies the pathway and i want to mention three things by way of introduction number one God is the God of supernatural supplies. He is the God of supernatural supplies, the God of unnatural supplies. He's the God of supernatural supplies, unnatural supplies, beyond normal supplies. Example, we saw his supply for Elijah in 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 3 to verse 6, when he directed Elijah to the brook chariot. And fed Elijah by the ministry of a raven. That was not normal supply. That was supernatural supply. Another example is the example of the miraculous sustenance of the widow of Zarephath. In 1 Kings chapter 17 from verse 13 to verse 16. Where there was famine in the land and Elijah said... Make me a meal first for as long as the Lord lives, the barrel of meal shall not fail, the cruise of oil shall not fail until the Lord send rain on the earth. We saw supplies, the food could not finish. That was not a natural supply. Example number three was supernatural supply for Peter and the master at the lake of Gennesaret when it was time for Peter to pay the tax. In Matthew chapter 17, verse 27, he sent him to the, to the, to the sea to cast in a hook and bring out fish with money in his mouth. That was not normal supply. That was supernatural supply. That was beyond natural. And of course, our fourth example is the example of Peter at the lake of Gennesaret. I toiled all night, I caught nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And then in Luke chapter 5, verse 4 and 5, he enclosed a great multitude of fishes and the net break. That was not normal supply. Fifth example was the wedding in Cana of Galilee. In the wedding in Cana of Galilee, the wine had finished. And in John chapter 2 and in verse 5, all the way to verse 11, we saw how Jesus get release supernatural supply by turning water into wine let it be made clear that we serve the god of supernatural supplies number two key thing to know this morning is that faith in god is key to seeing the goodness goodies or supplies of god faith in god is key to seeing the goodness the goodies or the supplies of God. Faith in God. I had fainted unless I had believed to see. We just read that. To believe is to see. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. He said. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. God, faith in God is the key to our rewards in God. Is the key to our supplies in God. Faith. Finally, number three. Obedience. Is key to accessing divine supplies. Obedience. 
to scriptural instructions or injunctions is key to accessing supernatural supplies. The faith that brings us supplies is obedience driven faith. Faith driven by obedience. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1 to 2 it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all these commandments which I command thee this day that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God you hearken to the voice of the Lord your God you open the way for the blessings that overtake Job 36 11 if they obey and they serve him they spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure if they obey there is a connection between obedience and abundance if they obey and serve him they spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure Isaiah chapter 1 and in verse 21 if you be willing from verse 20 All right, verse 19. 119. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. There is good in the land, but it is for the willing and it's for the obedient. Right now, I prophesy to someone here, your obedience of what you will be hearing this morning will usher you into a realm of resources that will amaze you. That amen is not a good one. If you are saying amen, say a louder amen. If you are saying amen, say the loudest amen. Let me tell you the fourth point. The end time is a season for both spiritual revival and resources explosion. The end time is a season for both spiritual revival and resources explosion. Joel chapter 2 verse 23. Joel chapter 2 verse 23. Be glad then you children of Zion and rejoice in the Lord your God for he has given you the former rain moderately and he will cause to come for you the rain. He's talking of revival. The former rain and the latter rain in the first month. Explosion. Look at what happens. And your floors, resources, shall be full of wheat. And your fats shall be overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten. The canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army, which I sent among you. And you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that has dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed. That is fire is burning. Fire of prayer. Fire of study of the word. Fire in fasting. Fire of evangelism. Miracles we have never seen before are happening. The kind of things eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, things that have not entered the heart of man. We saw very, very unusual things in Ibadan, drastic miracles in Ibadan. I wish that we can just document the things we saw there. All manner of things will be happening. In the middle of that, the kind of resources that the church had never handled before. The kind of wealth the kind of money the kind of abundance for the sake of global evangelization because this gospel must be pushed out in a hurry Zechariah chapter 1 verse 17 said I see this true prosperity shall yet be spread abroad and the Lord shall comfort Zion Haggai chapter 2 verse 6 all the way to verse 9 Haggai 2 for thus saith the Lord of hosts Yet once it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens, and the earth, and the sea, and the dry land. Hey. And I will shake all nations. 
and the desire of nations shall come and I will fill this house with glory unusual revival see the Lord of hosts see the what accompanies it the silver is mine and the gold is mine see the Lord of hosts and I will use this silver and gold to ensure that the glory of this latter house shall be greater than that of the former see the Lord of hosts and in this place will I give peace see the Lord of hosts somebody shout the loudest amen. amen and God is looking for people the eyes of the Lord Run it to and fro the earth. I think you should note that as note number five. God is in search of vessels to entrust with end time wealth. He is in search of vessels to entrust with end time wealth. He is in search of vessels. I'm about to tell you something that will shock you. But God is in search. He said in 1 Chronicles chapter 16 verse 9. He said the eyes of the Lord is running to and fro. To show himself strong on the behalf of them whose hearts are perfect. That 1 Chronicles 16.9 or 2 Chronicles 69. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth. To show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. God is looking for men and looking for women. Let me shock you. If God will not find believers who will be relevant to his purpose on it, he will locate unbelievers that will be faithful. They may not go to church too much but they understand kingdom assignment. That was what he did with Cyrus. Cyrus, a hidden king, he called him my anointed. Isaiah chapter 45, verse, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Isaiah chapter 45 and in verse 1, don't say the Lord, to his anointed, Cyrus, the king of Persia, whose right hand I have holding to subdue nations before him and I will lose the loins of kings to open before him the two leaf gates and the gates shall not be shut and I will go before this Cyrus and make the crooked places straight and I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron what will I do with the hidden unbeliever Cyrus king I will give him the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places that you may know that I, the Lord which called thee by thy name, am the God of Israel. Lord, why is it that you are looking for Cyrus to anoint when there are other Israelites? Why couldn't get you get an Israeli? The answer is in verse 14 of chapter 40, 45. And there he said, verse 13, I have raised him up in righteousness and I will direct all his ways. He shall build my city. Even though he is a hidden king but he understands what it means to build a city for God. He shall build my city. He shall let my captives go not for price nor for reward. Said the Lord of hosts. They did not build the city. Cyrus it was that commanded for the rebuilding of, of Jerusalem after the captivity. He empowered Nehemiah and gave him all the resources, all the finances, everything Nehemiah needed for the rebuilding of the walls of Jerusalem. Empowered Ezra for the building of the temple. That is what the Bible means that if these hold their peace, the stones will cry out. If I can't find those I will use in church, I am going to find those that will be committed. They may not, they may not, they may not be, they may not speak in tongues. They may not do all the things that church people do. But one thing I can count on, if I tell them do this, they will do it. One sing songwriter said I will never let a stone to take my place. 
Ah, I won't allow a stone to take my place. I won't allow a Gentile to take my place. I won't allow the hidden to take my place. I believe there are people seated here right now that God is saying, it is you I am looking for. Originally, I have you in mind, but if you will not function and understand kingdom mentality, then I have to look somewhere else to somebody who may not have been in church as long as you have been. And then I'll tell him, do this, he say, yes, sir. Do this, he say, yes, sir. Do this, he say, well, I'm not, I'm not interested in money myself. All I want is for you. Am I communicating? But I, I believe a mantle is coming on somebody today. Grace is coming on somebody today. Help is coming on somebody today. And God is going to, is going to cause you to do what you are meant to do for your generation. You believe that? Shout the Lord and say, Amen. Lift your hands and say, here am I, Lord. Use me. I will not be alive for another person to take my place, to do what I'm meant to do. I am available. Try me, Lord, with your resources. Try me, Lord. Give the Lord a praise and take your seat. Having said all of this, what are the pillars? Of our obedience for supernatural supplies. What do we do in order to see supernatural supplies? What pillars of obedience? Number one, the revelation of the word. The revelation of the word of God for supernatural supplies. The revelation of the word of God for supernatural supplies. You need to know what is in the word for you. And you need to know what the word of God says about you. Psalm 35 and in verse 27, it says, let them shout for joy and be glad. That favor my righteous cause here. Let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified, which has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. Tell John verse 10, verse 2. He said, Behold, be, Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. And of course, in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1 out all the way to verse 12, he told us of obeying God and all these blessings coming upon us. Revelation, you need to know. What will revelation do for you? Three things. Number one, revelation brings possession. Revelation brings possession. The things that are revealed belong to us. Deuteronomy 29, 29. Revelation brings possession. Revelation, number, secondly, precedes releases. And thirdly, revelation determines manifestation. If you want to manifest in any realm, you must have revelation in that realm. If you want to manifest in the realm of finances, you must have revelation in the realm of supplies. The revelation of the word. Can I go ahead? I have so much to say this morning. So revelation brings possession. Please make it easy for them on the screen. Revelation precedes releases and revelation determines manifestation so what is our pillar number one if we're going to see supernatural supplies we need the revelation of the word what has God said concerning me what has God said in his word what do I need to know number two is the conviction of the heart for supernatural supplies the conviction of the heart I had fainted except that I believed to see I believed to see. Psalm 27 and in verse 13, I believed to see. The conviction of the heart. You must be convinced in your heart. Listen to these two or three things. First, what you believe determines what you see. I believe to see. 
Those who believe that they are going to struggle like their father struggled will see struggles. What you believe determines what you see. Secondly, what you believe. We already said that Psalm 27 verse 3. I believed to see. I believed to see. What you believe determines what you see. Third, secondly, what you believe determines what you receive. As many as believe him, he, he gave them power to become. What you believe determines what you receive. And fi finally, what you believe, listen to this, what you believe determines how you behave. And how you behave determines what you become. If you believe that scarcity is not your portion, you won't behave it. What you believe determines how you behave. For as he thinketh in his heart, so he see. Proverbs chapter 23 verse 7. What you believe determines how you behave. And how you behave determines what you become. We used to sing this song in Deeper Life in many, many years ago. I'm a millionaire. I'm a millionaire. Oh. My father is rich in houses and lands, and I'm his heir. I'm a millionaire. I'm a millionaire. Uh, I'm a happy, happy, happy millionaire. <laughs> All right. Even though if you are, even if, even if you are a pauper, yet you are singing it, you believe it. My father in heaven is riches. Is my father in heaven is rich in houses and lands and I am his heir. I'm a millionaire. Yeah, I'm a millionaire. I am a happy, happy, happy millionaire. Is there anybody like that here? These are the kind of mentality that occupies some of our head. We don't look inferior to nobody under heaven. Don't look beggarly. Don't look pitiable. Not today, from the beginning. Am I speaking to somebody here? This, there must be the revelation of the word for supernatural supplies. You must know where the word promises you supply. Number two, there must be the conviction of the heart for supernatural supplies. Number three, there must be the understanding. Of the covenant of supernatural supplies. Anybody ready to take this journey with me? It's a long journey. The understanding of the covenant of supernatural supplies. Genesis 8 verse 22. Genesis 8 22. He said, while the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. And then, Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 and verse 7. He said, But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man, according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Take note of these two or three things regarding the covenant of supply. First, supernatural supply or divine provision is not a promise to claim, but a covenant to walk in. It's not something you claim and say, God said he will supply all my needs according to his riches. So I'm, I'm waiting. No, no, no. There is, you look for what to do. It's not a promise to claim, but a covenant to walk in. Secondly, yes, I like the way those greeters or ushers are functioning. The fact that you're on duty does not mean that you should be distracted and not listen to the message. Secondly, God is obligated only when man is committed. As far as the covenant is concerned, God is obligated only when man is committed. 
say it the other way. The commitment of God provokes the obligation. Sorry. The commitment of man provokes the obligation or the responses of God. There is something man does that makes God to do what he's meant to do. He that sweat sparingly shall reap sparingly and he that sweat bountifully shall reap bountifully and God is able to make all grace. That is, I have done what I am meant to do and then God causes me to abound in all things. Listen to this. Everything that can be done to bring about the harvest is exercising futility until the seed is in the earth. Everything. Anything a person wants to do, he tilled the ground in the, in the, in the farm, he did everything, but he has not, rain is falling, but he has not put the seed in the earth. That must be understood. Paul the Apostle said in Acts chapter 20, I believe, verse 35. Be part. It is more blessed. He said, I have showed you all things. How does so labor in you ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus. How he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. If you are going to receive from God, the blessing is in the giving. Let's go to point number four. Point number three is understanding the covenant of supernatural supplies. Number four is the practice of the covenant of supernatural supply. You understand that until seed leaves your hand, the harvest does not come in your direction. And then you practice the covenant of supernatural supply. We just say that now you practice the covenant of supernatural supply. Again, Genesis 8, 20. And Noah built an altar unto the Lord, took of every clean beast and of every clean fowl and offered upon, offered burnt offerings on the altar and God smelt a good sabbath and God enacted that covenant. Now listen to this. Why, is it, why did we say understand the covenant and then practice the covenant? This is why. What you know is not what changes your life. It is what you do that changes your life. Listen to this. What you know may make you intelligent it is what you do that makes you wise. Information brings intelligence. Action confirms wisdom. So there are many intelligent fools. It's not that the man does not know. He is a consultant pathologist. He knows that alcohol will give him fatty liver, liver cirrhosis, and primary liver cell cancer. But he's a drunkard. He's an intelligent fool. Did you hear what I just said? He's a consultant cardiologist. He knows that tobacco smoking is destroying his heart. He's giving him heart muscle disease cardiomyopathy and other diseases but he's a chain smoker he's a very very intelligent fool there are many like that in the church I'm sorry to say it but your information made you too intelligent your lack of action made you so foolish am I communicating it is boasting about what you know is a useless form of boasting it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a waste of boast. But today, I see people of action stepping out of here. If you are among them, you will shout the loudest, say amen. If you are among them, you will shout the loudest, say amen. 
If you are among them, you shout amen at the top of your voice. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. There are two things you will know about giving. Number one, or A, give revelationally. When you are giving, whether you are tithing or you are sowing a seed or sacrificing a sacrifice, let revelation, let understanding fuel the action. That was why he said in Isaiah chapter 32, verse 20b, he said, Blessed I, or 20a, blessed are ye that sow beside waters. What is water? Water is the word. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 26 that they might sanctify and cleanse them by the washing of water by the word. Water is the word. So he said if you want to sow let it be around the revelation. So your sowing is blessed if it is beside the waters. <laughs> you know there are many people in the village who say uh, our, our priests say we should give one over ten. That's how they call tight. One over ten. I'm sure you know. They've I mean, they been doing it for donkey years. They don't expect anything out of it. It's just a religious duty. So it may not produce anything. He said, but blessed are you if you sow beside waters. Give revelationally. Number two, give relentlessly. Relentless relentless, tirelessly. Weary out the enemy with your giving. Galatians chapter 6 and in verse 9. Galatians chapter 6 and in verse 9. He said, Let's start from verse 7 maybe. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man sweat, that shall he reap. For he that sweat to the flesh shall also now go to verse 9 and let us not be weary in well doing for in due season we shall reap if we don't get tired 10 and as we have opportunity let us do good unto all men so he's talking about giving and doing good especially unto them that are the household of faith give relentlessly Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 4 Ecclesiastes 11 verse 4 he said he that observeth the wind shall not sow and he that regarded the clouds shall not reap. The living Bible said, if you wait for perfect conditions, you don't get anything done. Now in verse 6, he said, in the morning sow your seed. Verse 6. In the morning sow your seed. In the evening we told not your hand. Meaning that as opportunity arises, go ahead, for thou knowest not which one shall bring you the, the result, the breakthrough? You don't know which particular giving action, which particular sowing action is going to bring an explosion. Whether the one of the morning or the one in the evening, or whether both of them shall cause explosion. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. You know the Bible is complete. See, I, I, I've given before, I haven't seen result. He said, in the morning, so you said, in the evening, withhold not your, your hand. You don't know which one is the one that is that is that is anointed to produce your result or whether it is both so the revelation of the word the conviction of the heart number three the understanding of the covenant number four is the practice of the covenant anybody here who is receiving something so far say aloud amen Anybody whose life is about to totally be disconnected from poverty forever, shout the loudest amen. amen. Anybody who is saying, no Cyrus can take my place, shout the loudest amen. amen. Lift your hands and say in the name of Jesus, no Cyrus can take my place. It is my season and I must play it well. Give the Lord the praise as you take your seat. Number five pillar is the possession of the picture and mindset of abundance. The possession of the picture.
picture and the mindset of abundance. As he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Proverbs 23 and in verse 7. Genesis 13 and in verse 15. The possession of the picture and the mindset of the abundance. All the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it and to thy seed forever. Somebody shout the Lord and say amen. Proverbs 21 and in verse 5. Proverbs 21 and in verse 5. He said, the thoughts of the diligent. What is flowing through the mind of a, of a diligent man is plenteousness. When you open his mind, it is filled with plenty. Pictures of plenty. But of everyone that is hasty, only to want. Take note of these two or three things. One, mental picture determines actual future. What is not your picture can never be your future. Mental picture determines actual future. I heard that from Bishop Uyedepo for the first time. Number two, what goes through your mind overflows into your life. Anything that is running through your mind, sooner or later will overflow into your life. Criminals commit crime because it has been going through their mind. It overflows into your life. And thirdly, what you imagine, what you imagine eventually emerges. What you imagine eventually emerges. Ephesians 3 and verse 20. Unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all. That we can ask or think or imagine. Listen. God responds to our asking. The same way he responds to our thinking. Somebody say amen. Somebody say loud amen. Don't let the negative thoughts of your upbringing, upbringing overwhelm your mind. Don't let it. I told my wife the other day, I said one of the greatest things my own father did for, for me, he didn't do it directly. And I don't know how, what, it, what, what the others experienced. But what I, what, one of the greatest things my own father did that I will, I will appreciate him permanently, apart from the fact that Apart from many things, it, the thought of scarcity doesn't exist. He had plenty lorries and plenty buses. And then when they return from journeys, they'll be counting raw money. That is, at times from, from, from money till they'll just be, it's just like that. You just be seeing money, although you can't touch it. But, 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 but the fact is that money is that easy. You just, you just, you just knew that money is, money is not that scarce. And all of you who tell your children, sit down, do you pluck money from trees? And all manner of demotivating things, stop it. You are giving them a negative picture of scarcity, a picture of hardship. All that money, all that money I just mentioned now, before you see one out of it, that is before you, you enter your hand. <laughs> I don't know. It is just available for the sight. I mean, it's the way you smell food without it in it. <laughs> I mean, that's the truth of the matter. That's the I mean, rugged, rugged truth. My father was very, very... He would wait for his change at the filling station. <laughs> Hallelujah. Do you understand what I'm talking about? But even if that was not your own experience, you can create your own and create for your children and for your generation. If you need to put physical pictures around you, Instead of picture of somebody riding bicycle 
on your on your on your 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 your, your wall or the, the the picture of somebody uh, living inside a hut hot everywhere. It says artist impression. I, I don't have any challenge with those pictures. If already you have uh, skyscrapers everywhere. And I come, what goes through the possibilities of your mind affects the realities of your life. They affect the realities of your life. They affect the realities of your life. I announce today in the name that is above every name, Jesus Christ, the resurrected Lord. I see unusual possibilities coming for somebody. You are the one, share the Lord and say amen. I like you to see yourself paying for an air bus or owning it for evangelism to South America, evangelism to Russia, evangelism to China, to Japan. Let your mind be filled with unbelievable, unbelievable possibilities. If, if the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and your father owns the land, anything is possible in your mind. Anything should be possible. Papa Yerebo said they went for a program one day. I think it was in Benin. It, has happened, it happened to him twice. One day at Benin, they, they, they were rushing to Lagos. They saw a man with his private jet. He sent one of the pastors to him, go and tell that man. That we want him to give us lift until our own arrives. <laughs> when they spoke to the man, the man laughed. He said, You people come, please. <laughs> it wasn't there yet, but he said, Until our own arrives. Because he can see it, he can think it. Now he has been flying the plane by next year to be 30 years. Are you hearing what I'm saying here today? If it cannot cross your mind, it will not mistakenly cross your life. But now, I announce to somebody, every, every mental, every men, closed mentality or closed mindset, I declare it is open now. If you are saying amen, you shout the loudest say amen. It is open now. Give the Lord a praise as you take your seat. That is the possession of the picture and the mindset. What you imagine will eventually emerge. Do I have more time? Can I go ahead? Because I am just about halfway. That is the truth. I'm not trying to impress you. That is the truth. Number six is the maintenance of the right utterance. The right utterance, your words, your words, what comes out of your mouth must be correct. The Bible said in Proverbs chapter 18 verse 20 and then verse 21, it said, A man's belly shall be filled, shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth and with the increase of his lips he will be filled. What is coming out of his mouth will determine his fullness and satisfaction. He said death and life are in the power of the tongue. You can say poverty and prosperity. You can say, you can say abundance and shortage. They are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Take note of two things as we run. First, the heart, the hand, and the mouth must cooperate. To bring about desired results. The hand, the heart, the heart, the hand, the mouth must cooperate to bring about desired supernatural results. Supernatural supply results. What is that cooperation? Listen. The heart believes. The hand releases. And the mouth declares and heaven delivers 
again the the heart believes the hand releases the, the, the heart believes that God is a covenant keeper is a supernatural supplier the hand releases in accordance with the covenant then the mouth declares I can't be stranded I cannot be wretched I can't be a beggar my God supplies all my needs according to his riches in glory even though it is terrible in Nigeria it is written when men are cast down I am saying there is a lifting up you are not talking like everybody is talking Oh, in, this, in the country we find ourselves except you know somebody you can't succeed well, except you do this you cannot do that no the heart believes the hand releases the mouth declares you haven't finished yet and heaven delivers heaven delivers what must be delivered is delivered heaven delivers you will never allow your mouth 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 to go against your heart and your hand see when the belief is right the release is right but the speech is wrong the outcome will be wrong did you hear what I just said? When the belief is right, you believe God will supply all your needs. The release is right, you are a giver. But the speech is wrong. We are managing, how are you? We are managing. When did you become a manager? How is life? We are patching. Where did you learn tailoring from? <laughs> look at the neighbor and say I'm not patching if I need to patch anything I'll look for a tailor and people think that they are just being, being frank so there's no, in the realm of the spirit there is no joke like in words as you have spoken in my ears, so will I do it unto you. That's Numbers chapter 14 verse 28. As you have spoken in my ears. He said, don't say before an angel it is an error. Don't allow your mouth to cause your flesh to sin. Look at that for me in Ecclesiastes, I believe chapter 5. Why, why must God destroy your work? Neither should you say before an angel is an error. Look at it for me, very important scripture. Don't allow your mouth to cause your flesh to sin. Is it 5, 8 or something? Can you look at it? 5, 6. Suffer not your mouth to cause your flesh to sin. So your mouth can cause your flesh to sin. Neither should you say before an angel. I was just playing. It was an error. No, I didn't mean it. Somebody say, I, I die you. You wonder, many times people say, Pastor, I am dying. On my way out, say, I am dying. I say, so what do you want me to do? You want me to stand against your decision? <laughs> you, you, you want to die? You want an agreement prayer for the dead? <laughs> the neither should you say before the angel, I was just playing. It was a joke. I didn't mean it. You know, he said, don't say it was an error because God will still go ahead and be angry at your voice that you are speaking negative things and destroy the work of your hands. So what your hand is doing in giving can be destroyed with what your mouth is saying. That is why we don't play with words. Inside the lift, are you going down? I can never go down. Are you going to the ground floor? I can't even go to the ground. We are going to the reception. <laughs> hey! Hey! That 
was one of the first lessons my wife learned. Food, fin food finish? No, food doesn't finish. Nothing finishes here. Yes, Things can need replacement. Yes, Rice need replacement. Yes, Beans need replacement. Yes, Soap need replacement. Anything can need replacement, but they can never finish. And since we say they need replacement, they are always replaced. And if, we, if they are not finished and we say they are finished, we finish them with our mouth. I want you to take it very seriously. You need a serious approach to life in order to have a glorious destiny. Why should you say it was an Why Don't say before an angel, I was just joking. There are people who joke all manner of joke. In fact, I was admitted oh, I nearly died. Say, really? So I'm joking. What? There are people who pray who, 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 who unbelievers who joke like that. Somebody say amen. amen. Lift up your right hand and say, I am doing well. I want you to make some audacious declarations. I am doing well. Everything is working fine. Nothing is bad. All things are working together to my advantage. Things shall end well. In my life, they shall end well. Shall the Lord say amen. Take your seat. Finally, on that point, the words of your mouth ultimately brings home your harvest. That is your third point of number six. The words of your mouth ultimately brings home your harvest. It says, with the increase of your lips, you shall be filled. I believe that was Proverbs 13 verse 2 where we just read. The words of your mouth, they bring home your harvest and then Proverbs 18 and then verse 20. Now let's go to point number 7. What is number 7? Action that will guarantee supernatural supply is the maintenance of the climate of joy and praise. Joy and praise. Psalm 126, verse 5. They that sow in tears shall reap with joy. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 3. The joy. Ten verse three, let's see. Therefore with joy shall you draw waters out of the wells of salvation. They rejoice before thee according to the joy in harvest. That was what I was looking for. Joy in harvest. You can look at that. Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 19. Out of them shall proceed thanksgiving. And the voice of them that make merry. And I will multiply them. And they shall not be few. And I will glorify them. And they shall not be small. Three things I want you to note. Number one. Joy and praise are the irrigation and fertilization of the seed. Your joy, your praise, they water your seed. They, they water your seed. They fertilize your seed. That was why Joel 1, 11, 12 said, the harvest, be ye ashamed, though ye husbandmen, Holy, you dry vine dressers for the wheat and for the barley. Because the harvest of the field is perished. The vine is dried up, the fig tree languishes, the pomegranate tree, the palm tree also, and the apple tree, even all the trees of the field are withered because joy is withered away from the sons of men. Joy irrigates the harvest. Secondly, joy and praise. Are sequels, you know, sequel, S I K C K L E S. They are sequels of the harvest. They they reap with joy. You use joy to reap. You use joy to reap. There are many people whose harvest is ripe, but joy is not available, so they can't bring it home. You reap with joy. You reap with joy. You reap with joy. You reap. It doesn't matter how you sowed. But if it is reaping, if it comes to reaping, you reap with joy. Murmuring and grumbling 
will only bring dryness and destruction. Neither murmur ye as they murmured, and we are destroyed. Am I communicating? Listen. Joy is not a gift. Joy is a choice. Did you hear what I just said? You can choose to be excited. And you can choose to be depressed. But if you know that there are too many things that are connected to your joy. Joy of the Lord is your strength. If you want to be weak, be depressed. Are you hearing what I'm saying? They shall reap with joy. If you want to remain poor, be depressed. That is, you carry face like long john bicycle. Long john. Not excited. Not excitable. Not exciting. Nobody can hang around you. Atmosphere is very toxic. You are angry with everything. Including the person that just came, you didn't know him. That's transfer of, the, of frustration. Just transfer the frustration. Some children suffer it a lot. Husband is, uh, is uh, uh, having a challenge with wife. Wife is transferring it on children. Especially the one that looked like, like the father the most. <laughs> so see your big head. This insult, he cannot insult the man directly. <laughs> that will never be our portion. There are too many things. With joy shall you draw waters. Joy makes you draw light and insight from the book. Joy guarantees the presence of God around you. In your presence is fullness of joy. So when you know that this joy we are talking about is determining many things in your life. Nobody will beg you to be excited. The things are not working, you are depressed. The more depressed, the more you press the things that are not working. You press them down. Somebody say amen. amen. This is a secret many don't know. You are a tighter. You are a giver. But you are permanently depressed. They say we should give after I have given. I have tightened. I'm waiting. God, over to you. Over to you. Uh, if that is the case, don't give at all. I'm begging you, don't give at all. Because nothing will come out of it. So that you don't say they lie to you. Don't give at all. This is one of the churches where nobody will beg you to give. Where even we will forget to take offering until the people will remind the pastor. Offering. If offering was what was on your mind before you came to preach, will you forget it? That may be the first thing to take in case you forget later. And then maybe make more offerings available. And then uh, the offering number two, offering number three. Offering number four, offering number five. And then when you know that there are five offerings, the money you wanted to give for one, you divide it by five. <laughs> hey! <laughs> oh my God. Number seven, the maintenance of joy. Look at your neighbor and say, I refuse to be depressed. Say it louder, I reject depression. I reject depression. And when you see anybody coming to fraternize you with depression, run away for your life. Say, excuse me, we'll see you later. I don't want to join any problem to issues of my life and destiny. Just go. Joy is very critical. Number eight is the avoidance 
of anti-covenant practices. After that, can you take four more? The avoidance of anti-covenant practices. And this is majorly talking of borrowing and waste. They are enemies of supernatural supply. Borrowing and waste. We live in a time today. I, 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 I don't know the number of people. Listen. And I want to beg everyone here today on the matter of borrowing. The matter of borrowing. My wife used to ask me, when people send me a message, say, how did they get your number? She has stopped asking now because the number, someone called me from somewhere, say, somebody gave me your number. My friend had us in all, all manner of text message. You know, the, some of the frequent messages I, I get now, I borrowed money. They have put my name online or put my name in newspaper. Or they are, eh? My name is circulating everywhere. And they have threatened that they are coming to arrest me, arrest my garant or something. I want to commit suicide. Not one, not two, not three. People who want to kill. Say, what? I cannot face the shame anymore. Let me just die. Not one, not two, not three. This is as frequent as, almost as frequent as the text for kidnap or text for anything. Borrow, borrow. I'm indebted. I did a business or online business. I did a, a something trade or something, something. Borrowed money. And the online borrowing. Am I communicating? It's so, it's everywhere. When they are trying to borrow you the money, they won't tell you the consequences. They will, they will do, they will just sugarcoat everything. It's when you have entered it, it's like spider that, it's like fly that tends that spider web. Are you hearing what I'm saying here today? I told you, I, saw, I sat with a billionaire. He said before he borrowed money from the bank, he was at least one point, I believe 014 billion dollars in cash of his own before he borrowed. Then he, they came with incentives are going to help you to service this and that. I'm talking of multi-billion dollar kind of business. It ran him down. Ran him down to a point where he's looking for money. In fact, he said they are organizing to take over his business. He said it looks like those people are so, so, so wicked that they want to deliberately make his business to fail so they can take it over. Only God rescued him. He, he just got rescued. You know what he told me? He said, please beg the brethren to avoid borrowing. He told me. Please beg the brethren to avoid borrowing. I, I saw it from scripture and I'm telling you now and I'm begging you based on that. Did you now escape it? Is it clear? Let me tell you three things or four things about borrowing. Number one, borrowing is functioning contrary to covenant Let me say it as clear as I Borrowing takes a man out of the covenant platform and program into self-help and alternative sources. Self-help. It takes you out of the covenant program and platform. What's the covenant? Deuteronomy chapter 15 verse 6. It said, Thou, for the Lord thy God blessed thee as he promised thee, and thou shalt lend unto many nations, but thou shalt not borrow and thou shalt reign, reign over many nations, but they shall not reign over thee. Thou shalt not borrow. Do you know the meaning of that number two? Borrowing is disobedience. 
and rebellion to divine instruction is disobedience and rebellion against divine instruction and rebellion brings dryness it's re disobedience and rebellion against divine instruction and rebellion brings dryness Psalm 65 68 verse 6 the Lord set the solitary in families he bringeth out those that are bound with chains but the rebellious dwell in a dry land rebellious dwell in a dry land Romans 13 verse 8 oh no man nothing except to love oh no man nothing except to love so when you are going up and down owing and owing and owing and owing one of the major sources of problem between brethren is borrowing owing and owing and owing you are in disobedience and it will bring you dryness finally borrowing is emptying tomorrow into today such that when tomorrow arrives it arrives empty the money that is meant for tomorrow you use it today it is emptying tomorrow into today so that when tomorrow arrives it is empty that is what wicked governments of the of the world do to their nations when they borrow and borrow and borrow and borrow and borrow and then listen I traveled to Singapore some years ago. Many, many years ago, myself and my wife. And they were showing us houses, condominiums. 15 story, 20 story, 40 story, 30 story. All manner. Plenty everywhere. And you know what they told us? The person, our guide. He said, these are unoccupied condominiums, houses. He said, for who? He said, this is for citizens, children that have not yet been born. Head for them. Our own case is poverty, scarcity, shortage for generation yet to be born. Borrow, 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 borrow for projects that can be seen. God will definitely deliver this nation and other such nations from the hands of wicked leadership. You believe that? Shout the loudest. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Is God speaking to anybody here at all? May your father, your earthly father, never leave you the heritage of debt and poverty. That was what happened to the prophet's children. Where the father died, they came to carry them as born men because their father died in debt. That will never be your portion. Borrowing is spending money you don't have. What is my counsel? Avoid borrowing where possible at all cost. Trust God, and I'll come to that shortly. Trust God for guidance. Trust God for direction on how to exist without borrowing and without begging. There is a way. It will show you what to do. There is one kind of borrowing that is not technical borrowing. Where they carry what is yours and they gave you money in exchange. Do you understand? They carry, they gave you 100 million. They are with your house of 150 million. Technically, they are meant to be the one owing you 50 million, but they don't do so. By the time you are unable to pay that money and they sell that house, if you are not careful, CC will not enter your hand back. They might even ask you for more money because they say interest has entered. Technically, you are not owing each other, but even if that can be avoided, let it be avoided. Am I communicating at all? Something is happening here. Lift up your right hand. I break the debt, the plague of debt. Any or anybody already in debt, I decree help to come out of it is released upon you. Help to come out of it is released upon you. I declare that plague is broken. Number nine. And of course, you know, you know of waste. 
waste destroys potential wealth. Where you are just buying things you don't need. Things are scattered everywhere. John 6, 11 to 13. Well, now, number nine. What is our wisdom number nine or our faith pillar number nine? Obedience number nine is the avoidance of dependence on man. Don't look up to any man. Don't look up to any man. Don't make any human being your source. Jeremiah 17, 5 to 8. To eight. Say, thus said the Lord, cursed be the man that trusted in man and maketh flesh his arm and whose heart departed from the Lord. He shall be like a heat in the desert. He shall not see when good cometh, but he shall inhabit the patch places in the wilderness, in a salt land, not inhabited. We can stop there. But blessed is the man that trusted in the Lord, whose hope the Lord is. He shall be like a tree planted by the waters and so forth and so on. Psalm 34 verse 5. He said they looked up to him and they were lightened. And their faces were not ashamed. Refuse to make any human being your God. Refuse to make any man your source. Two things I want you to note. One. That's 9a. Looking up to man is looking away from God. And looking away from God is looking away from good. Looking up to man is looking away from God. And looking away from God is looking away from good. Secondly, looking up to man is looking away from God. And looking away from God equals looking down in shame. Shame. Brutally. Brutally. If we were looking at the offering that came in every Sunday in this church, this building would not be built. It would not be built by now. It won't be built. That is, that is how serious it is that the offering that people give every Sunday is the source. It won't be built. Because the offering we were, that was coming at that time, I am not sure whether one year's offering could do one month's work. That was going on here. One month's work. One month. Am I communicating? There was a time where it was almost like a million dollars a month. At the peak of construction. Those heavy, heavy columns there. Iron. When they give you iron, iron, iron rod bill. That's iron rod. 90 something million, 100 million rod that will enter the building and disappear. If you, if that is, how much is the offering? God will show you help and mercy. If you are saying amen, say a louder amen. If you are saying amen, say louder amen. amen. If we are looking up to one man for this building, the man would have been mixed with the concrete if possible. <laughs> uh, because himself would have been so depleted that he say, just miss me with the concrete. I don't have anything to, to bring anymore. That is what happens to people who look up to man. When the men dry up, they dry up. Look at your neighbor, say your destiny is big. Say no man's pocket is big enough to sponsor your big destiny. Did you hear what I said? Look at somebody and say your destiny is big. No man's pocket is big enough to handle the demands of your destiny. Only God has enough pocket. When you see people talk, 
you hear it in their voice. My uncle that is the only supporter of our family, he has got, he is not looking at anybody anymore. My only help, that our senator, that our governor, my only help is not receiving my call anymore. You hear it in people's mouth. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth, and God who is the jealous God, say, is it a human being you are talking about like this? Let me leave you and the person. I will watch how you handle each other. Cardiff, Wales, and Germany, they are all there. I release a blessing upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. You know, many, many, many things out there, you have to do it credit-wise, right, Valentin? But it's possible to do it cash or to do it without going that route. Somebody say it loud, amen. Lift up your right and say, God is my source. Louder, God is my source. Say, man may be a channel, but God remains my source. Shout the loudest, amen. Oh Lord. Number 10. I have 12. That was why at number 6 I told you I was halfway. Number 10 is openness to divine direction. Lord, what is the business you want me to get into? Lord, what is the right investment? Lord, where is my harvest? Your portion is not everywhere. But there is a particular position for your portion. Psalm 23 verse 1 to the end. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. If God is the one leading me, it will be green pastures. Not dry pastures. It will be still waters. Not troubled, tr turbulent and troubled water. I almost say troubled. If you combine the two. He maketh me. Did you see Isaiah chapter 48 verse 21? They thirsted not when he led them through the desert. He led them through the deserts, and because they were connected to his leading, they thirsted not. Even though it was desert, he caused the waters to flow out of the rock for them. He clave the rock also, and the waters gushed out. They thirsted not when he led them. You will like this passage. Isaiah 49 verse 10. 49 10. Look at what he said. They shall not hunger nor thirst. Neither shall they heat nor the sun smite them. Why? For he that has mercy on them shall lead them. Even by the springs of water shall he guide them. All of you read it with me. This is a blasphemous scripture. If that's the only one you are taking away is good. Read it loud and clear. They shall hunger. They shall not hunger nor thirst. Neither shall they heat nor the sun smite them. For he that has mercy on them shall lead them. Even by the springs of water. He leads you away from hunger. He leads you away from thirst. You are permitted to hunger if you lead yourself. You are permitted to be thirsty if you are disconnected from his voice. Church, let us stop struggling. Let us start resting. Resting in his leading. Resting in his direction. Am I communicating? There is a business where your money is waiting for you. There is an investment that is for you. There is a career. There is a partnership. Titan, I am a titan, I am a giver. It's not enough. You are a titan and you went into timber business. And God has no plan for you there. 
there will be millionaire timber men. But that is not your realm. He has something else for you. Maybe a truck operation. College business. Whatever. Just something. And you are just there. Pay my tithe. God said, yes, the heaven is open. Rain is falling. Even on your seed. But you are on a dry ground. Take note of two things and then we shall begin to round off. Number one, there is a connection between divine provision and divine direction. Divine provision and divine direction. Divine provision and divine direction. And of course I just said, you are not permitted to hunger or thirst. If he is allowed to lead and guide you. That's the second thing to note. You are not permitted to hunger or thirst. If he is allowed to lead or guide you. Into business. Into the right investment. Etc. To Elijah he said go to the brook chariot. There is your supply. Not brook Kidron. Not brook Sidron. Brook chariot. Not like Gennesaret, Brook, Cherit. To Elijah he said, go to the widow of Zarephath. Not the widow of Naphtali. Not the widow of Galilee. To Peter he said, go to the sea of Tiberias. Not the sea of Galilee. Not the lake of Gennesaret. And catch the fish. You don't just move and say, see, see. Let me just look for the nearby sea. And I need any fish I catch. I'll open this. You may catch snake if you go to the, sea, the wrong sea. Or in fact, catch toad. Am I communicating? Let me tell you. When a man feels the calling of God and he wants to step into ministry, he will take a fast if he's serious. Days before God. Where, Lord? What, Lord? Where am I going? When am I going? What am I preaching? What do you want me to do? In the same manner. If you're a Christian businessman, don't just jump into business. Separate yourself. What business, Lord? Which area, Lord? What area of investment? Where am I putting my resources? How do I go about this? You operate it like you operate a calling. Somebody heard something just this morning. You operate it like you operate a calling. You operate it like you operate a calling. You operate it like you operate a calling. And at the end of the day, you will be flying. Number 11. Submission to prophetic instruction and impartation. I think this is the longest message I've preached on this subject. Submission to prophetic instruction. An impartation. Second Chronicles chapter 20 verse 20b. Believe in the Lord your God. So shall you be established. Believe his prophets. So shall you prosper. Believe the Lord your God. So shall you be established. Believe his prophets. So shall you prosper. Take note again of two things. The prosperity of the people. Is tied. To the mantle of their prophet. The prosperity of the people is tied to the mantle of their prophet. When this man said, he went to South Africa and everything dried up. God gave him direction. He came in here and that mantle broke that yoke. A woman came from America and he said, God sent her to come here because in her word, God told her to come for a prosperity mantle. It broke that devil. Second Chronicles 20, 20b. 20 and, and secondly, prophetic instruction is connected to prophetic, is connected to supernatural provision. Prophetic instruction. Prophetic instruction. One day Elisha stood at the gate of Samaria and he said, by this time tomorrow, A measure of meal shall be so and so amount. It came to pass. 
Peter, he hearkened to the instruction of the master at the lake of Gennesaret. Luke chapter 5, verse 4 to 5. That turned around his situation. Wedding in Cana of Galilee, whatsoever he said unto you, do it. They did it. John chapter 2, verse 5. And there was wine. Listen to this. Don't forget. Virtue is drawn by value. Virtue is drawn by value. The virtue you value is the virtue you can draw. My wife asked me to pray for her at various junctions and various points for different things. On the second night of the crusade in Ibadan, she ministered. If I didn't minister that night, it would have been all right. It would have been okay. That is, if I said, let me just sit down and go through for the whole ministry, it would have been the same quality and order of what is, is saying. By virtue of valued impartation over the years. There are some who think they know the person that is standing or that they are close to. No. Mary thought she knew Jesus. Until Jesus said, don't you know I need to be about my father's business? She said, what? Age 12? Which father are you talking about? He said, Maria was the one carrying you. You didn't carry my pregnancy. You don't really know who you are dealing with. <laughs> Mary? <laughs> Hallelujah. No, no, no. Please, I beg you. If your child is anointed, value the unction. Your own child that came out of your womb. My mother valued the unction. My father. You know, crusade at the National Stadium 2007. My father was, was a present. 2007 National Stadium. Cleared blood pressure. Cleared blood sugar. Am I communicating? Is God speaking to somebody here at all? I stand there with that prophetic mantle to announce your days of scarcity are over forever. Say amen like a believer. Say amen like a believer. Say a louder believers, amen. How many of you got something here today? How many of you believe that the days of scarcity and shortage in your life is over forever? Some of us may need to take a, a retreat a few days with this message. You sit on it until it sits in you and everything changes. Take your seat. And number last, 12, before I draw the conclusion, is the practice of habitual thanksgiving and appreciation. Habitually. Every slight harvest you see, every slight favor you see, appreciate it. Two things, and I, and I round off. Appreciation establishes the blessing, both of the past and the present. Appreciation. Thanksgiving stabilizes what God has given you and what is done. When you say thank you to God, whatever he has done, what he is doing gets rooted. Malachi chapter 4 verse 2. He said, but unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness. Verse 3. All right. Can you see chapter 3 verse 2? I think I missed someone, something here. Chapter 2. Verse 
He said, because you will not lay it to heart. Can you do two, two? Let's see. Because you will not lay it to heart. Right. If you will not hear, and if you will not lay it to heart, that is Malachi 2, 2. To give glory to my name. If it will not occur to you to say thank you to me for anything I have done already, I will even send a curse upon you. Is Jehovah talking? And I will curse what you think you have as a blessing. Yeah, I have cursed them already because you do not lay it to heart. That is a mystery why some people's prosperity disappears suddenly, breakthrough disappears suddenly. Big manness disappear suddenly. When it happened, they took it to mean that they were too, so intelligent. They were so powerful. They were so connected. He said, if you didn't, if you don't lay it to heart to say thank you to me, what you think is a blessing, I will curse it and turn it into a curse. In fact, I have already cursed it. That will never be your portion. Thanksgiving. Be proven. Don't say what is this. That was what the children of Israel said in the wilderness. When manna fell. That's the meaning of manna. They carried it and said what is this? Instead of saying thank you Lord. What is this? God said you say what is this? Eat it for 40 years. Don't change it. <laughs> Morning, afternoon, evening. You, can't, you won't change the diet. <laughs> if, you, if you had said thank you father. This is powerful. Even though we don't know what it is, but we are grateful. All of them say, what is this? What is this? You see how people do hand, they say, what is this? <laughs> you want God to change your story? Appreciate him for where you are now. But I see somebody here, under the next 72 hours, a change of story is coming your way. Shout the loudest, amen. The loud most, amen. And finally, appreciation brings multiplication. Anything you appreciate multiplies. It took the five loaves, two fishes, and gave thanks, it increased. Matthew chapter 6, verse 11 and 12. Jeremiah chapter 20, 30 verse 19. Out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of them and make merry and I'll multiply them. Profuse multiplication will happen with profuse appreciation. Beloved, what have I said are the pillars of our obedience of faith. Number one, the revelation of the word of God for super. Oh, now read it with me. Let's go. We are in, in class now. Number one, the revelation of the word of God for supernatural supplies. Number two, the conviction of the heart for supernatural supplies. Number three, the understanding of the covenant of supernatural supplies. Number four, the practice of the covenant of supernatural supplies. Number five, the possession of the picture and mindset of abundance. Number six, the maintenance of the right utterance. Number seven, the maintenance of the climate of joy and praise. Number eight, the avoidance of anti-covenant practices, especially borrowing. Include it so that somebody does not forget. Number nine, uh, the avoidance of dependence on man. Ten, openness to divine direction. Let God guide you into the right business. Eleven, submission. To prophetic instruction and impartation. Twelve. The practice of habitual thanksgiving. Give the Lord a big clap of hand. All of them. Is rooted. All of them. They are all rooted. In one scripture. Matthew 6. 33. But seek ye first. The kingdom of God. And his righteousness. And all these things. Shall be added. Seek first. Put God first. When you wake up in the morning, let God be first. When you, see, when you see food, when you wake up in the morning, let phone not be first. 
When you see food, let eating not be the first thing. When you see money, not, let spending on yourself not be the first thing. Seek first. Everything you do, ask yourself, what is God first in this matter? God first in this matter. In this church, if the check for tight is not signed, other expenses cannot happen. That is the church as, 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 as a body. Are you hearing what I'm saying? In our family, my wife brings my check and this is the beginning of the month. Tight, prophet suffering, giving, giving for welfare and all of that is signed first before any check can be signed to do anything in the house. There is no need in the house that will, that will, or of the family, that will come ahead of the givings that are covenant, the tithe, giving to the poor, free will offering. Free will offering is signed in bulk, then is distributed into envelopes for the number of services in the month. Not when it is service time, then I'm trying to dip a hand in the pocket and trying to be looking for what was not kept there, as if, <laughs> as if the pocket is a bottomless pit. I don't know. It was planned ahead for the whole month. All that, all that was signed before any personal need. So when people see you, they say, oh, this man is lucky. This man, no, 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 it's not lucky. It's lighty. And then you are not just, you, you are not just intelligent with the light. You are wise with the light. You put it into action. Put God first and no devil can keep you last. Stand up on your feet. Take your seat so that you can stand well. Now, ushers at this moment, I might be able to have up to 15 to 20 minutes before the service is over. And I don't want any distractive movement because I believe somebody's change has come. I see millionaires and billionaires for the kingdom, for the kingdom. I see women, many women among them. For the kingdom, 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 for the kingdom. You know, men have a lot of analysis. The women, they fall in love easily. In love with husband, in love with God, in love for children and when they decide in love with devil <laughs> that, that, witches are more deadly than, than wizards that's female in witchcraft <laughs> that's true but they, they fall in love easily in love with God that was why that Shunammite woman when it was time he built a house for the prophet. He only went and took permission from husband. This man that passes, can we build him a house? You can go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead if you think so. She built the house. <laughs> I'm sure the, the, the husband was, must have been very angry since that time. So that when the prophet prophesied and the child was born, when the child See my head, my head. Husband said, go and meet your mother. Go and meet your mother. Let both, he, both her and the prophet that she built house for, let them help you. <laughs> Hallelujah. I see many women. I see many young people under age 30 that God will empower financially, supernaturally, that will shock your generation. Stand up on your feet everywhere you are. And that is not to say that men are exempt. Many, many men. Heavily loaded men. Middle-aged men. Men in their, in, 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 in their 60s and 70s. That God will give a chance to show that he is the God of a second chance. Stand up on your feet.
please, I do not want anybody to move out until we are true. Without any doubt. Cardiff, Wales. Is today their first Sunday? Wow. Happy to see you all in Wales. God bless you. God bless you. Today is their first Sunday service. There are more than that. I saw some. Yes, yes, yes. Congratulations. And I saw Germany also just now. Lift up your hands, everyone. How many of you are genuinely grateful that in this season God is helping you to hear this kind of word? Lift up your hands and just receive from God. Receive. I see a mantle, wealth mantle about to be released a mass just now. Just open your mouth and begin to speak to God. That's right. I just heard the Cyrus mantle. The Cyrus mantle. The Cyrus mantle is about to drop right now. Lift your hands and begin to speak to God. Go open your mouth. Lift your hands and say after me, say, Father. Louder, Father. Say it loud as Father. Thank you for your word to me this morning. I believe, I believe this is my war. This is my war. I believe, I believe my life, my life can, never can never remain, remain the, same. the same. I receive. I receive. I receive, I receive, I receive, I receive your help, your help by this word. By this word. Oh, Lord. oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray, 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 pray. in the name of Jesus Isaiah chapter 35 and in verse 2 I'd like you to read it with me everybody want to go this is talking about you it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy and singing the glory of Paul and Enche shall be given to him call your name the excellency of Paul and Enche they shall see the glory of the Lord and the excellency of our God read it again want to go verse 35 one, verse five, 2 want to go I shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy and singing. The glory, call your name, of Paul and Enche shall be given unto him. The excellency of Paul and Enche. And I shall see the glory of the Lord and the excellency of my God. There is a glory, there is a wealth realm in glory. My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches that is inside glory. Father, I make demands on access for the glory allocation to my life. Father, I ask you to grant me access by your mercy into the glory that is allocated to my life. Lift your hands and lift your voice and pray after me and say, Father, Father I, ask I ask that you will grant me, you grant me access, access into that glory, into that, glory that, is that is allocated for my life, for my life. To, my life to my life in this season. I ask, I ask that you grant me, you grant me access, access into that glory, into that, glory that, is that is allocated to my life, to my life for my life, for my life in this season. Oh Lord, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray. <laughs> Let her 
Grant me access into that glory allocated to my life in this season. In the name of Jesus, access into that glory allocated to my life in this season. In Jesus' precious name. Lift your two hands and say, Father, Father I, receive I receive the grace, the grace to obey you. To obey. Father, Father, I receive, I receive the, grace the grace to obey, to obey the instructions the I received today. I receive that grace, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. Receive that grace. Jesus. We are about to pray for our nation and you can pray for your own nation where you are as well. Father, the glory that is allocated to our nation, Nigeria, help us not to miss it. Help us to access it. We are in a very, very sensitive season. This is April. Very soon it is May. Very soon an administration is going. Another one is to come. Father, we shall not miss the glory. Even at this junction, we shall not miss the glory. Ay, 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 ay. Lift your hands and your voice and say, Father, say, Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask for the glory, access to the glory that is allocated to us as a nation in this season. Father, we receive access to the glory allocated to us as a nation. We receive access. Father, Help us not to miss that glory. Oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray. Help us. Help us not to miss that glory. We ask for access to the glory allocated to us as a nation in this season. Father, help us not to miss that glory, Lord. Let us not miss that glory. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your two hands. Something is about to happen. All right, take your seat one minute. Just one minute. Can you play the clip if you have a three minutes clip of the Ibadan Crusade highlight? Get set for something that God is about to do. Was it meant to be impartation service? That was last Sunday. All right. All movements restricted. Do you have the Ibadan Crusade? clip. They did a seven minute clip but it was too long. Have we been able to shorten it down to three minutes? Otherwise you can play that for three minutes. I stand on the authority of the word of God and I take authority over the principality cover, over Ibado and this environment in the name of Jesus. I declare the heavens open to the gospel of Jesus. <laughs> from brown, maroon, reddish, that kind of color with deafness in the ear. Like you don't hear with your, your ear, it looks like it, it, it grew up with you. Yes, maroonish color dress. And I say maroon is enough for the ear that is not hearing with the maroon color dress. Right here. Thank you. 
Are you just sitting and looking like that? Hey, 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 hey. That girl was born deaf and dumb. How long were you not hearing? Lati ba olo tibo. From bed. Lati ba tibo. And how old? How many days? I'm not even You're 33 years old. Odo meta li lo ma. 33 years. Bako. She said tonight, la la as you were ministering, she saw a dove fell on her. A dove fell on, fell her. on her. Where she was, and instantly she came under power, and she had an encounter. A tortoise walked out of her. Dove came and tortoise left. Tortoise left, and now she started moving the hand. The log shoulder became a log. The log leg became a log. Are you just sitting and? I decree the fire of the Holy Ghost on all the altars in these territories in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. I speak fire upon the land of Ibadan. Fire in Oyo State. Fire in the Southwest. Fire in the South. Fire in the whole of Nigeria. To burn every altar and everything that is not of God. Many, many, many drastic miracles, creative miracles, born miracles, all manner. Give the Lord a big clap of hand. Anybody ready for that Cyrus mantle? Wealth mantle. Where God opens you to the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places. Stand up on your feet where you are. Lift up your two hands. Lift your two hands. Everyone who came in here with the mantle of poverty and scarcity and shortage, today is the end of it. <laughs>